with you. You've been trying to figure out what's wrong with you. I hear God saying there's an intruder in your spirit. Welcome to Berean Babs Ben the Now. I'm your host, Vale Chikuni. We begin. Sarah Jax Roberts, our only queen in the house, the queen of twisting scripture. This time around, she has taken her talents all the way to Africa, Nigeria. Okay? So, Sarah, <laughs> the title is getting big, yo. Okay, so now she was preaching in Nigeria, okay, where she's influencing another, you know, I mean, like, that's all the way in Africa. So, hey, man, I don't know, but let's just watch how everything went down okay so pay attention sarah jacks roberts here we go uh, they didn't got us in it now <laughs> i wish a weapon would luke 23 i love you too luke 23 verse 32 through 35. please help me sing like the worship team you know okay this moment in the text, Jesus is headed to the cross to be put to death. I only have three verses to share with you from this moment, but I believe that it will help you as it has served me well. If I had to take a subject, it would be blinded by potential. Luke 23 verse 32 begins, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, there were also two other criminals led with him to be put to death. And when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the criminals, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then Jesus said, forgive them, Father forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they divided his garments and cast lots, and the people stood looking on. But even the rulers with their sneer saying, he saved others, let him save himself if he is the Christ. The chosen of God, Spirit of the Living God, you have ordered. Okay, so that's the text that uh, Sarah read from, and this is what she'll be preaching from, right? That's exactly that we're going to assume. I did listen to the entire message. We're not going to listen to the entire message over here. I'll be happy to leave a link that way you guys you can listen to it. But I can promise you that. After that, everything else that transpired was nothing but that text. Was nothing but that text. So we're gonna listen in to uh to what she continued to say. Either either she forgot that's the text that she read, then she went on to be talking about other things. I have no idea. But I'm gonna play the video for you guys and then you know we'll be making comments as we go along. But we won't be able to reference to uh, Luke 23 because I don't think she was anywhere near that. Okay? Wait, oh. <laughs> so let's listen in to uh, Mrs. Roberts. Okay, here we go. Same thing happened to Sarah, who once wanted a child in the Bible. And then when the angel Lord finally says to her, you're going to give birth, she laughs. How did I go from being an expectation to being the one who laughs at the very thing I was praying for? Something infiltrated my inner environment. And because it infiltrated my inner environment, I don't show up with the same heart and the same passion that is required, not negotiable. It is required that you have your heart in this thing because you cannot change anything unless your heart is in it. You cannot withstand the discouragement unless your heart is in it. But I came here to let you know that somebody's getting their heart back. I came here to let you know that God will not leave you on the mission field without taking care of the wounds that have affected your heart. I came here to let you know maybe I brought your heart back with you. Maybe I came to tell you that God can do a heart surgery right here, right now in this room, that if you would be willing to open up your mouth and to open up your spirit and say, God, I want my heart back. I want my heart for the things of God. I want my heart for this purpose. I want my heart for my children. I want my heart for this ministry. God, I want it back. I want it back. I want it back. I can't keep living and walking like I don't have a heart anymore. I can't keep pretending that it doesn't matter to me anymore. And I cannot continue to watch a generation be destroyed and to watch my family system crumble while I sit back and do nothing. I hear God saying everything I'm going to do through the earth, I'm going to do it through you. But I got to do it through your heart. I cannot do it through your intellect. I cannot I do it through your connection. I can only do it when your heart is in it. I don't think there's anybody like Sarah Jakes. Okay? So, yes. I don't know. I have no idea. Because she told us she'll be preaching from Luke 23. Okay? And she read the text. 
Now we we have wandered away. She ended up using Sarah as an example, okay, uh, in Genesis. I, I have no idea. I'm trying to figure out, okay, can we connect some one, two things over here? No, nothing. So she's out here. She, she, she went all the way to Nigeria to let those people know that God wants to connect them to their heart. So what is God going to use to connect them to the heart? Which heart? And what are the mechanisms to use all those things to be connected to? I have no, I have no idea. I have no clue. I have noticed I've watched quite a few sermons about Sarah. It's the same thing. She is a very good uh, spokesperson. Okay. And, you know, like I always say, you know what I'm saying? You know, if there's things that you want to learn from this girl, man, her, her fashion and her makeup, on point. Okay. On point. Okay, on point. But uh, I, let's listen in a little bit more to see uh, what she has to say in case maybe, you know what I mean, she will go back to the scripture that she said that she was going to be preaching from. Okay, so uh, I, I don't know. Let's just listen a little bit, but I promise you there's nothing there, there. Okay, <laughs> but uh, let's listen in a little bit. Here we go. So we have this external environment that we must navigate. And it is tricky. It is certainly the knowledge of good and evil, these environments that we must navigate. I can see the good and I can see the evil and I gotta straddle both sides of it and I gotta dip and weave and bob and weave to make sure that I stay strategic. But I am telling you, your external environment is not nearly as important as navigating your inner environment. And doing the work to identify how did doubt, how did worry, how did fear, how did anxiety rob me of my depression, how did pride, how did ego make me chase the dollar when I was once chasing change, help me to understand what happened in my heart where I became afraid, God help me to understand where the crack is because I recognize that you are a restorer and anywhere there is a crack that you can fill it again and God if you fill it again then maybe I could be used again and if I could be used again maybe the promise that you have connected to my name can be established in the earth. So what is that promise that's connected to your name that needs to be established on the earth? What is the standard? What is the criteria? What does that even mean? Where are we finding that from the text? Where are we finding that from the text? I don't know. Okay. So I don't know. So this is, um, this is a scripture that she was reading from. Okay. And this is Luke uh, 23, 32. That's fine. You know what I mean? The two were criminals were led away to put to death with him. And when they came to the place, this called the scar, they were crucified him, the criminals. So this is talking about the story of Jesus, uh, the crucifixion of Jesus. But everything else that Sarah is talking about has got nothing to do with what is transpiring over here. But this is Sarah. Okay. And I was just like, man. Can we find something, a little bit something here, a little bit there? No, nothing. So this is um, another day where else she was preaching. There was nothing that she said uh, with, the, uh, with the Nigerian crew over, or, over there. But uh, let's listen in to another version of Sarah. Here we go. <laughs> oh. You've been trying to figure out what's wrong with you. I hear God saying there's an intruder in your spirit. It started off heartbreak, but now you don't know what your life is worth anymore. That's because what should have just been a heartbreak has become the state that you live in. Intruder, intruder, intruder. There's an intruder in your spirit. There's an intruder. That's why you can't sleep at night. There's an intruder in your spirit. That's why you don't know what to do with your life anymore. There's an intruder in your spirit. That's why suicidal ideation is taking over. There's an intruder in your spirit. Oh, God. Yes, now we have an intruder. This was another day. But I'm just trying to show you guys that every time that she's preaching, instead of I just stick to the text, she doesn't. She just wanders away. She'll find something that she's just going to be uh, saying about that thing. And then, you know, it goes to people's emotions and people latch on those emotions and she runs with it. And apparently, clearly, this thing is uh, is in the family, okay? So now, we're going to share uh, Mr. Roberts himself, okay? So he's in on it, okay? He's in on it. So, <laughs> so let's listen in to their technique. This is, uh, I'll, you know, 
just listen to what uh, he's saying over here, how they go about it, okay? This is uh, Sarah Jake's husband. Several years ago, we made this pact when it comes to speaking and ministering and really anything that we're doing. And that pact was that whenever we minister, we aren't to stop wrestling with the word or wrestling with the room until we strike glory. We made this pact that every time we preach, every time we teach, every time we minister, if we didn't strike glory, we didn't do anything. Now, I want to take a step back. In Pastor Sarah, several years ago, Yes, me and Pastor Sarah. So we have Mr. Roberts over here who calls uh, his wife a pastor. So, I mean, you just say that, I just walk out of there, okay? <laughs> you are a pastor and your wife is also a pastor and you address her as a pastor. Like, I mean, is she a pastor? She can be a pastor, she's a woman. But be that as it may, this is what they believe, right? So you can create a see even the foundation there is is not what it should be no they can never be women pastors as much as they call themselves as pastors they are not pastors so it's unfortunate you we have here somebody who believes that they can be pastors even td jakes believes that the daughter is a pastor but it's a family affair as they say so yes that's uh sarah out there okay wondering that there's intruder lit intruder lit there's an intruder in your spirit so who is in this intruder how did this intruder uh, entered, quote unquote, uh, your spirit? Okay. Where is this intruder coming from? And what can we do to get rid of this intruder? I would like to know. None of those things were explained and they will never be explained. So they definitely want to tug to your emotions. They don't stick to the scriptures. They don't exegete nothing. It's just manipulation. Uh, it's just talking points. That's just what it is. Can you just open the Bible and preach from the text? At least do that. Do that. They don't do that at all. But do you guys have intruder? Okay. Do you know about this intruder? Let, let me know. So, yes, she did take the talents all the way to Nigeria over there. And who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Right, guys that is all that i had for you guys today i hope you find this to be informative to you be sure to subscribe to my channel leave me a comment let me know maybe i'm missing something i would like to hear from you guys all right stay tuned more coming this week until until next time remember to be in the know thank you